Hey YouTube, how you going? Just going to do another video on another piece of equipment that I used at the World's Toughest Motor and this time it's on a, a Garmin 310 XT or essentially any GPS watch. <coughs> um, while uh, kind of I guess preparing for the World's Toughest Motor I wasn't 100% sure if I'd go with a GPS watch. I certainly wanted one but was unsure of whether the budget would allow this watch retails for 350 or thereabouts in Australia, in America around the 250 odd mark. Uh, I was in New York the week before the event and just could not find it anywhere. I know it is the older, I guess, model from Garmin. It's since been replaced by the 910, I believe. But uh, in terms of, I guess, usability and also being a little bit cheaper than the 910, it's something that I wanted to go for. Looked everywhere for it and literally you know, about 30 or 40 shops, and I'm not joking. I ended up finding it and I had it on sale for $50, so it was a bargain, I couldn't resist it. Um, and in a way, I kind of wish I got two. Reason why I chose the 310 was that it provides 20 hours battery life. It's also waterproof, um, so it would hold up okay with the obstacles, you know, like um, Funky Monkey if you fell in the water, walk the plank, any of the swimming obstacles, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, the only other Garmin I've had before this is the Garmin 210. If you're familiar with the Garmin lines, uh, product lines, the Garmin 210 is essentially a very simple entry level watch. Just shows your pace, heart rate, distance, that kind of thing. As soon as I got the Garmin 310, I knew it was a lot better. Um, it has a lot more functions. You can use it for running, swimming, biking. Um, but the other main thing is it has a number of different screens so you can configure it. So you could have one showing your pace, distance, then you could have another one showing your heart rate, uh, um, average heart rate throughout the whole event, current heart rate, heart rate zones. Um, you could have you know previous lap time, current lap time. So you, there's just so many different options you could have on the screen. So you could compare how you're going now to how you were going earlier in the event or how you're going now relative to your average. And the main reason why I wanted the Garmin was that I always tend to go out too hard in races and I thought having a tool such as that would allow me to kind of pace myself a little bit better. Also provide information obviously on the distance so you kind of can gauge obviously between mile markers where you are and how you're going. For the first two laps that worked really well for me. Um, I was really happy with being able to do the first lap in just over two hours and the second lap in around two hours, 25 minutes, two and a half hours or thereabouts. Um, and I think a key component of that was having the Garmin because it made sure I didn't push myself too hard and blow up uh, on the field. Also Obvious, you know, it obviously keeps track of time and it ensured that I was eating regularly and that was a really big um, thing for me because in the past when I've done training runs and that if I don't eat correctly I just run out of energy and drop like a stone in terms of performance but throughout the whole of the world's toughest mudder I wasn't, I didn't uh, suffer from a lack of race nutrition or anything like that it was only really kind of my previous injuries that hindered my performance a little bit uh, on laps three, four, three and four mainly. By lap five I was okay again. Um, so yeah, if I was to do the world's toughest mudder again, I'd definitely, definitely consider using a GPS watch. If you can't afford a GPS watch, just a waterproof watch, um, you know, will provide you with a little bit of it, you know, information, you know, you can keep track of the mile markers yourself when you pass them and then you've obviously got the time and you can do some rough calculations in your head as you're going to see how fast you're going but uh, in your average pace everything like that but if you can afford it I'd definitely go with the Garmin um, or a similar brand of course one last thing the heart rate monitor did work for the first kind of lap and a half after that it stopped working it's not broken I just think that because your wetsuit got so wet um, and stayed wet it couldn't transmit between the neoprene and the watch so that's just something to consider guys the other thing as well the band it actually fits well, it fits my wrist when I'm wearing up to three mil thick gloves when I put on my four three wetsuit and the five mil gloves it wouldn't fit so I had to just kind of strap it around my chest uh, around my bib uh, it did damage it a little bit you probably can't see this little chip up there 
um, but other than that it's okay. So if you have the time, maybe look at getting a different band for the watch that's slightly larger than normal. That would be my tip guys, so let us know your thoughts. Would you run with a Garmin? Have you run with a Garmin in a Tough Mudder, World's Toughest Mudder, Mudder or other obstacle race? And as always, please comment uh, and subscribe for more videos. Thanks very much.